Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular to this channel, you know I am a fan of Raylib. If you are new to this channel, and maybe you're new to Raylib, and I'm going to introduce you to a great framework today. Now this is an easy to use library or framework for game development. It was inspired by Borland's BGI graphic interface from back in the what, 90s, maybe even late 80s, and the XNA framework. I've long been a friend of XNA, and one of the challenges I have with people that are just starting out is they want to use C or C++, and that is almost always a pain in the arse. And what Raylib does really well is it provides a very simple, straightforward library that is pre-configured for you, so you can get up and going with C or C++ programming about as easily as possible. On top of that, it's also got bindings for a number of different languages, one of the joys of being written in C. Uh, so we've got here a support on a number of different platforms, pretty much every platform you could want, Raspberry Pi, um, Mac, Windows, Linux, um, this guy, which was FreeBSD, I believe, uh, Android, HTML5. The only thing really I see missing there is iOS. On top of that, Raylib uses language bindings for there's C Sharp, there's Go, there's Python, there's Ruby, there's Lua, there's Rust, there's Odin, and others. Nice thing about being a C-based library, very easy to make bindings for other languages. Of course, this is a C library, so you can use it with C++. So if you want to kind of get into the world of C++, you can use this as you know your underlying layer of technology, uh, but you can use C++ pretty much transparently. Um, it's got a number of different tools built in as well. Things for uh, FX, uh, text, uh, part, uh, tile packing, and so on, uh, like GUI layouts, GUI icons, all the tools you need to make games are actually packed in here as well, other than something like a level editor or something like that. The idea is you would probably build your game framework and engine on top of Raylib Technologies. Um, actually, you can kind of see that in action down here. So we got all of the basic things here. This is one of the really nice ones. There are no external dependencies, and that's basically where a lot of people that want to learn um, C++ development are going to run into a wall. It's the first time they need to start bringing in external libraries, start using something like CMake and trying to get your build working. In Raylib's case, don't have to worry about that. It's written in straight C99 code, uh, uses a camel case, Pascal case notation. It's built on top of OpenGL, uses OpenGL 1 through 3.3 or Open GL ES2. There's font support in there. There's even full 3D support, the ability to load models, uh, animations, VR rendering even, and there's tons and tons and tons of code samples. So you can sort of see how Raylib is put together here. Uh, your engine will go, or game or tools or whatever would go on top of here. Then you've got it built into modules, things like text, textures, core, shapes, models. If you don't use models, you don't need to bring that in. Now, all of this, of course, is built over top of their OpenGL, OpenGL ES layer. You've got the math libraries available and then the audio libraries. You could actually take some of these components out and use them in your own project without necessarily having dependencies on the other bits. A very nice thing about the design. Now, here we're talking about Raylib 3.0. And ironically, I'm not actually going to get into a lot more of the details here. There's a huge change list of items here. Um, we've got some more examples comes in. We've got some re-architecting goes on. Uh, global variables kind of been moved into a global context state, kind of make the design design cleaner, IO access has been standardized around four functions, some of the memory optimization has been changed, uh, text and audio improvements, new examples were added, uh, GitHub's actions, uh, continuous improvement systems were uh, in there as well. And one of the things I really love about Raylib though, is that it comes with these installers, at least on Windows, and this gives you a pre-configured development environment. This gives you either the TCC, the tiny C compiler, or the, Mi, uh, the Ming W, um, which is an open source, basically a Windows-based version of GC. And you can just download and, and run this installer and have everything you need to get up and going. We'll get back to that in just one second. So if you are interested, this is an open source project. The code is up on GitHub. As you can see, it's under the Zlib license and it is very actively developed. So, um, you know, there's, there's new changes pretty much every couple of days or even in this case, hours. So Raylib is one of those projects that is very, very, very much being developed. And like you said, there's a ton of uh, bindings out there for different areas new functionalities being added all the time. Uh, so this is a project I do keep my eye on. And again, this is my recommendation. If you want to start with C or C++, start with Raylib. It's about as simple as you can get, and you don't have to deal with the warts. Now, one of the really nice thing here is this is their documentation. It's a quick reference card, and it's basically a quick uh, self-explaining documentation of all of the different functions that are available in Raylib, broken down by modules. And for a lot of people, especially if you have existing experience and you know how to decipher what all this gibberish is, uh, that's almost all you will ever need to get up and going with that. However, there is more documentation available in the form of, first off, completed games, a ton of examples. We're going to see some in a second. We got full-blown completed games. You can see there's also been a couple of full games that have been developed using Raylib uh, that you can check out as well. So you can see what the engine is capable of. If 
you want to check out Raylib, by the way, it's available at raylib.com. I'll link that in the linked article down below. And then, of course, there is the wiki. The wiki is kind of the place that shows kind of how to get started, some more uh, advanced details, how to work with the various different platforms that are out there. By far and away, it's easiest to get started with Raylib using Windows, uh, but you can run it with other uh, IDEs and on other platforms. And there's basically instructions here in the wiki on how to do all of that. All right, so now I'm going to jump into Raylib. Now, keep in mind, Raylib is a C library. So this could be, you know, you could use it in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or Xcode or whatever. But what you see in front of you, this is Notepad++. The cool thing here is Raylib has been pre-configured to just work. So you've got a, a C file here. This is the core basic window example. It's about as straightforward as Raylib code gets. So create two variables to define your resolution. Initialize a window by passing those guys in and give it the title that will be displayed. Uh, set the target FPS and then loop until you get the close and inside begin draw clear background draw text and draw and then once you're done your game loop close the window so you can see how straightforward and clean it is this basic example is something what if you take out all of the commenting which is nice to actually see the comments by the way uh, but you take all that commenting out and you're looking at maybe six lines of code to do this. And then anything that you basically, if you're using the Notepad++ pre-configured uh, framework, just hit the F6 key. It will go ahead and run your project like so. And then boom, there you go. First ever Raylib window up and going, shut that down, head back over and then ta-da, you're here. Now the cool thing about Raylib though, is there are an absolute ton of examples here. So we're gonna go in open and you see here we've got examples into a number of different categories. So core is your basic stuff like creating windows, creating cameras and so on. But we've got audio examples, we've got physics based examples, we've got um, even we can get into 3Ds, we can load up 3D models. So here's a 3D model animation example. Again, the code doesn't get that complicated on the whole. Uh, load it up, hit F6 to run it, all of your code is in the one project. And there you see, press space to play the animal animation like so. So there you can see how um, you know, this is an example of how to play animation. Of course, with over a hundred plus examples, there's some much more advanced examples in here to learn from as well. So for example, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna stop saying example, for example. Let's go back to the examples folder, go into shaders, for example. Uh, scrolling down here, we're gonna find uh, ray marching. And let's pick raymarching.c right here. And we'll run that. So here you're gonna see uh, ray marching shader in action. You're gonna see kind of the, the 3D graphics that this thing is actually capable of. There you go. So you got some nice graphical effects going on right there. You see the light source moving and the results as a result of that. And this example here, obviously you've got a bunch of geometrics being created and so on, but even then, this example is only 114 lines of code. Again, heavily commented code. So if you want to learn things like uh, shader development or just basic game development in either you know 2D or 3D and C is your ideal programming language. Raylib just makes it so easy to go in and get started. You don't have to worry about the you know the the, the annoying nuances of hooking up um, your game engine to your library or anything else like that. There's a ton of programming stuff here, like the tons of examples to learn from. There's decent documentation in there. And again, these pieces can actually be pulled apart and used on their own. So for example, if you're building your own game and you need an audio library, you can just pull out the R audio library and use just it. Ditto for their math libraries, you can use them on their own in another project. So if you want to migrate away from this, you've got options. And again, you've got features in here like um, VR support. So this is a great place to learn C or C++ development. You don't have to go through the intricacies of setting up your tool. You don't have to worry about things like the linker. Uh, you basically just get in there and start writing code. And that first initial hurdle when it comes to C or C++ programming, you lose so, so many people at that stage. So there's where Raylib really, really does shine. Uh, I do recommend uh, you to check it out again. You can get mine normally just using the cheat sheet. This is almost enough documentation for the vast majority of people. Uh, just that simple comment at the end kind of tells you what each function does. Most of the actual parameters are pretty self-explanatory. And if you need more than that, again, there is the wiki there to get you going. Uh, there are some tutorials available out there to walk you from the beginning. I highly, highly recommend Raylib. Uh, so if you are looking to use C as your first language or C++, or even any of the other ones with binding, C Sharp, uh, Ruby, and so on, 
Uh, I do recommend you check out Raylib, completely cool, open source, rapidly improving library that is designed for beginners, but is capable enough that you can actually, you know, grow with the language as well. Or as I mentioned earlier on, you can take bits and pieces of them and use them as you wish. So again, the compiler versions are available. Raylib 3 just released today, six hours ago. Binary is available for uh, Windows uh, using MingW or TCC tool chains. Or, of course, you can, uh, you know, build it for your platform of choice. It is available on GitHub. All right, so that's it for now. Let me know what you think of Raylib in general, and I will talk to you all later. All right, goodbye.